Olympic City, Colorado Springs, Colorado. This is the USA Volleyball Show, and here are your hosts, Clarence Hughes and Stephen Munson. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the USA Volleyball Show. My voice just cracked, but that's okay. This is episode number 58, and yes, this is Regional Commissioner Month. Stephen, what's up? How are you doing? Regional Commissioner Month, indeed. I'm doing great. Uh, I was going to ask you, did you watch the Super Bowl? I did. I did. I kind of bounced around a couple of uh, restaurants yesterday. It was a really good game. It was a really good game. I, 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 I don't like games ending on a field goal, but hey, I mean, you know, a win is yeah. a win. You know, yeah, a, a little bit of a, yeah, time clock management there at the end, trying mm-hmm. to trying to be smart. Definitely the smart move for sure, but uh kind of kind of lame to to end a, a game <laughs> a game uh, uh, on that mag of that magnitude uh in that way but one of the best super bowls i've seen in recent history oh, i feel like just really as far good. as like scoring and and yeah just the the star power that that was on display was pretty cool with the yeah, this the two young quarterbacks there oh yeah 100 percent. and just even like you know first possession of the game uh you know kansas city defense comes out you know just hit it and then you know eagles still score and they just went back to back and they just you can really just see it just became a chess match but it was one of those just really 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 exciting chess matches that people you know like to see you know very historic super bowl for sure yeah for going, sure who were you going for well as you know i'm a dallas native big cowboys fan Eagles are division rivals. Nice mug you got there. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh and uh so yeah, I was pulling for the Chiefs. I know I know a lot of Broncos fans here in, in Colorado uh, <laughs> were pulling for the Eagles for the same reason, division rivals, but uh yeah. It was a fun game yeah. though. It was fun. <clears throat> yeah. I'm a Chargers fan and you know, AFC West. Yep, there you I'm, go. I'm yeah. tired of the Chiefs winning, but <laughs> I guess I get I guess I was pulling for the Eagles, but I didn't really I was indifferent. I, I didn't. I didn't care either way. It was. It was a good game. That's all anybody could really ask for, right? Unless you're actually playing, uh, or unless you got money on the game. But you know, neither here nor there. Yeah, neither here nor there. Really quick, did you, oh you you said you were bouncing around different restaurants. What's right, what's your yeah. like go to Super Bowl <clears throat> snack appetizer that you that you want to have on the on the spread? Do do wings count as snacks? Like yeah, I, I, yeah, I love yeah. that's I an love app. a good I love a good traditional uh, mm-hmm. flat. You know, just either lemon pepper, barbecue, buffalo. I like making wings too. So I've it's got to be like, the flats too. Are you? That's a flats what I bring. I'm a flats guy. Like, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Me too. Me too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Every, every time I order them, I, I do all flats. I pay the mm-hmm. extra dollar, whatever it is, to, to get all flats. <laughs> I guess <laughs> not messing around with the drums. People to with the drums take them out. Yep. Mm-hmm. My, like my Wingstop order, lemon pepper flats, one big thing of ranch. Mm-hmm. Wingstop ranch is the best. Is that going to be yeah. a new sponsor soon? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a big uh, I'm a big dips guy. Like I need Ooh. I need some uh, like we had some seven layer dip out on the spread Ooh. last night. Um, queso. <laughs> <Lara>. <laughs> Didn't know you could do that. Yes. Yeah, yes, you can order can. flats can only. Order only flats. Ooh, yeah, buffalo, buffalo chicken, chicken dip. We had man, one of those I'm, too. Why didn't we have a Super Bowl party? Why, why didn't we do this? You know who know, won? Who won those hot sauce? Who stole the hot sauces from the white elephant from our oh holiday party? We could we could have we could have had we a hot done a big party. <laughs> could have a hot one, seven layer dip, wings, all everything the wings. Party. Oh my goodness! All right, I'm starving. Mark it right. down on the calendar for next year for sure. Got it. A USA volleyball show podcast Super Bowl party. There we go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well that's uh awesome yeah definitely uh now that we're all nice and hungry here on this early uh recording for this episode uh let's let's move on to to the actual the the meat no pun intended of this of this episode we're we're talking about we we talked it <laughs> we brought it up at the beginning this is regional commissioners month we have three episodes dropping this is episode number two of that series uh in case you missed it we had on SEVA, that's Columbia Empire Volleyball Association Region Commissioner Cody March on our last episode. Uh, you can go check that out right now. Cody talked about uh, his region, the growth of the game, uh, specific, specifically to his region, and what they're doing at the grassroots level um, to grow the game there. Cody also talks about his background, as well as growing the officials 
pool in SEBA region. For more info on SEBA, contacting Cody or becoming a USAB member, visit usavolleyball.org. Now, everyone's favorite segment of the <coughs> podcast, News with Hughes. That's not what I heard. I don't know about that. It's <laughs> not what the reviews are saying. Uh, yeah, I know. I got a couple <laughs> negative ones. I'm just kidding. No, totally kidding. <laughs> All right. The 2023 U.S. Beach Club Championship will be held July 9th through the 11th in Hermosa Beach, California. Side note, Hermosa Beach is also one of my favorite places to go in California. In that Long Beach, places. L.A. County area. Really great. So really happy that's going to be there, too. But um, this is the second year of the joint venture between USA Volleyball and Association of Volleyball Professionals, a.k.a. AVP. The format mimics collegiate style of competition. Registration is now open, so sign your team up if you are interested. Uh, big congr congratulations to Kelsey Robinson Cook, Catherine Plummer, and Stephanie Samity on winning the Italian Cup after sweeping the U.S. teammates Jordan Larson, Jordan Thompson, and Dana Redkey in the final. That's a that's an amazing. Those Amazing lineup. That, those some <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking that. that. That's what I wanted to say. Those are some stacked teams, man. I'm yeah. really sad I had to miss that. I Woo! bet that was a fun match, yeah. Like, man, insane. Wow. But um, <laughs> also coming up, uh, are you interested in the men's college volleyball world, men's college volleyball scene? If so, check out our website for weekly roundups to stay up to date on results, rankings, key matchups, and much more. More information on these and all other news items can be found at usavolleyball.org. Now, on to today's show, and pretty fitting, uh, I would say, because today, uh, if you're listening to this when this comes out, it is Wisconsin Day, and we are talking to the Badger Region Commissioner, Regional Commissioner Jen Armson Dyer. Uh, back in December, we sat down with a few of our USA Volleyball Regional Commissioners at the 2022 ABCA convention. We chat with them about their region successes, uh, as well as some struggles that they've seen in their region. Uh, we talked to them about growing the game and so much more. Um, so continuing our, our dive, our, our series here into the Regional Commissioners uh, month, I was about to say episodes, month. <laughs> uh, They're technically episodes. Yeah, that's right. Here again, here is Badger Region Commissioner Jen Armson Dyer. Here's Jen. All right. Well, um, Jen, thanks again for taking the time and, you know, waking up a little early, walking in the cold <laughs> Nebraska snow to, uh, yes. you know, meet with us today here. Um, yeah, let's just kick things off. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is a question we really like to ask, you know, all of our guests here. And it's really, really cool to hear, you know, the region commissioner answer to this, too. Mm -hmm. Just how did you get immersed and introduced to the game of volleyball? And uh, from there, how does that tie into, you know, your journey to being a region commissioner, mm -hmm. you know, of the Badger region? Yeah. I mean, I have been a, my mom was a high school coach in Wisconsin for 40 years. And so I grew up in a gym. I grew up, you know, surrounded by volleyball. Um, I played club out of Madison, Wisconsin, um, went to college on a scholarship at Northwestern. Um, from there, I have a journalism degree from Northwestern now. And so I went into communications. And so, like I was saying before, I'm much more comfortable behind the camera yep. and the mic than in front of it. <laughs> um, so I was the sports information director at Penn State for 10 years with men's and women's volleyball. Um, during that huge run of you know 2007 to yeah. 2010, I left in nine um, with the men's and the women's. And so that was really cool. Um, my husband, my now husband, I met, he was the men's assistant coach at Penn State um, when they won the national title in 2008. And oh, so, so cool. Yeah, volleyball's just been a part of my life. And then when he transitioned from the men's game to the women's game at Marquette University, um, moved back to Wisconsin um, and just kind of happened in the Badger region. Um, I was hired and actually it was funny when I was hired, they were like, are you going to be bored? And I am so far from bored. Yep. <laughs> so I started off in membership and then, you know, some moves happened and I am now the executive director and commissioner. Awesome. So, yeah, I've been with Badger region since 2009. Okay, Yeah. cool. Wow, what an incredible career I already. Know. <laughs> I know, right? And a lot of it's turns lot. there, but still staying in volleyball, For which sure. is awesome. For what's, sure. what's been your favorite part so far along that journey? It sounds like you got a long way to go, a lot, a lot more stuff to kind of dive yeah. into, dig into. What's been like, you know, your favorite part so far? It's funny. I kind of refer to my life in like two parts. The, the, you know, the first part of my life was the communications part of it. And I loved it. I was single or newly married, didn't have kids. 
I got to, you know, go to a bunch of different cool places. I got to go to Hawaii every year with the men, Penn State men's team, which was terrible, not, especially not, in January yeah, from yeah, you know, State College, Pennsylvania. Yeah. <laughs> um, but just meeting the people and the relationships. And I, I guess that's probably the, the thing across. I mean, there's been some really cool experiences. Um, 2007 National Championship with Penn State, I was sitting right at the end and, and just being able to hear Coach Rose, who is a character in and of himself, um, just hearing what he's saying on the bench. And then when we won, it's funny if I was showing somebody this the other day, cause we were talking about this, um, 2007, if you watch the YouTube video, we win and I stand up because I have no idea what to do. <laughs> <laughs> like as yes, I didn't like, I do, I need to go get an interview. What do I need to do? So mm -hmm. it was funny. 2008, actually it was here in Omaha. I think, um, we were much more prepared, um, yeah. but it was just cool. Just the experiences. And then on the commissioner side, um, just the successes, the little stuff behind the scenes. Cause you know, as a commissioner, you're not out in front of a lot of people sometimes, yeah. but just the successes, the, the thank you notes that we get from parents and you know, my daughter got her serve over today and that was, Oh cool. my gosh. So um, cool. Seeing the successes of our high performance teams are really cool. Cause I get to be a little bit more involved and kind of back in front of people with that. Um, but that kind of reminds me what, why, why we do what we do. I love hearing about, uh, just, careers in sports careers mm -hmm. in volleyball you know a lot we have listeners who are young players uh, maybe collegiate players high school players mm -hmm. could you just talk a little bit about you know that opportunity to be to get into communications and yeah. you know what what excited you about that what what drove you to want to go into communications be an SID yeah so I when I was in high school I just got involved with the student newspaper um, and when I went to Northwestern, I actually declared as a geology major. Yeah. And <laughs> why'd you do that? I'm just <laughs> kind I, of complete loved, opposite. Yeah, there, I know. Yeah. Exactly. No, I loved, you know, rocks and minerals and yeah, hiking yeah. And, and all that stuff. A science so, nerd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no. no. And so I got okay. there and I was like, oh, this is a lot of science. Yeah, no, okay. I, I liked writing. I've always been a very good writer. Um, and I lucked into one of the best journalism schools in the country. Yeah, it's a pretty good <laughs> one. So, yeah. Yeah, for, it's, it's OK. <laughs> um, and so I was staying on campus. Um, for one of the summers and my academic advisor said, well, why don't you go intern in the athletic communications office? And that completely changed my life. And so it's, it's really cool. Those people behind the scenes that don't get the press and, you know, the support staffs and stuff like that. Um, I mean, that suggestion literally changed my life yeah. because I was on that path. I worked big 10 tournaments while a student at Northwestern, um, you know, just the proximity to Chicago. Um, and then just, just went into communications and it was, it was great because especially at a place like Penn state, the, the volleyball IQ had to be very high. And then also the, the journalism and the communications part. And so, um, especially with coach Rose, he asks a lot of everyone, um, and Pav too. Um, but I was able to prove to him that I could do this on, on both the communication side and the volleyball side. And I think I could intuitively know what he wanted and there's so many Russ Rose stories that could be another show in itself <laughs> yeah. so we're not going to go down that path but um just you know knowing what scores he would want to know after the match was done and printing box scores that he could see and kind of just kind of knowing as scary as it is knowing what he would want um I think really helped helped yeah what yeah I think it's okay. a I, I just think it's really important um for you know athletes to hear you know where their careers could go mm -hmm. after playing because sure. um, you know the pool gets smaller and smaller and yep. smaller the higher up in the level of play you get in volleyball Definitely. And we've had holly mcpeak on talking mm -hmm. about sports broadcasting so i loved hearing you talk yeah. about the sid side of that that was awesome thank yeah. you yeah. no and it's it's you know a lot of people think oh if i'm not a player then i have to be a coach there's so many different roles yeah. there is yeah. administration and i know um, some of my former teammates are in like athletic counseling or, you know, athletic For academic sure, yeah. counseling and stuff like that. And so there's so many ways that you can contribute after sports rather than just coaching yeah. and not just coaching. Cause obviously that's, yeah, <laughs> that's right. a huge thing too, but <laughs> yeah. there's many, many different avenues. And I just love the communications part. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a, a really good wheelhouse for me. And it serves me now in my position now because everything lives or dies by communication. Yeah. Um, and, and we really take that to heart in Badger region. Yeah. What's some advice that, you know, you have to an athlete or a student athlete who is making that transition, uh, you know, whether it's just 
trying to find that foot in the door in the sports industry or like like we are talking about now trying to go through that transition process of being an athlete to making that career into the sports industry like what, what's, what's some advice you have there i would say try everything i did an internship while at northwestern uh, in a magazine in downtown chicago and it was a great experience but i found out i didn't want to do that and so just learning what you don't want to do as part of you know, okay, that, that closes that door. I'm going to continue on this path. Um, I think one of the, the biggest eye openers for me when I started in the athletic communications world was just how much goes on behind the scenes. And so I would encourage athletes, you know, in high school or in college or any, just explore and talk to other people and talk to the athletic trainers and talk to the facilities people and talk to the academic counselors because something may spark um, Go and you're like, oh, yeah. high school newspaper exactly. like you did. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, some of those things that you never think of become your life. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's awesome. Um, do you just talk about your role as the commissioner mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the Badger region? I almost said gateway. We just had Steve <laughs> <laughs> Meath on okay. right before you. But yeah, just your role as the commissioner of the Badger region. Yeah, we have um, five. I'm one of five staff. And so we're based out of near Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, we just got the numbers yesterday. We're one of the eighth large, or we're the eighth largest region. Oh, awesome! And so we Congratulations. Have, we just passed yeah. fourteen thousand members, which is crazy to me. When I started, we had about seven. Yeah. Um, and so we have one hundred and thirty clubs, and so my job is just to kind of manage the circus. You know, in in region communications, we're all nonprofits. Or I'm sorry, region operations, we're all nonprofits. And so I'm the HR department. I'm the finance department. Uh, I'm the a you lot know, of hats. I'm the <laughs> ultimate cause, you know customer service mm -hmm. complaint department. Yeah, communications um, department, managing <laughs> stuff, <laughs> stuff like that. So it, it's a lot, and I think a lot goes on behind the scenes that people have no idea about. Right. But we we do a lot of stuff. We have a lot of you know, kind of fingers in different pies and, and try to try to do a lot of different things. So that's what I'm most proud of. And it's a cool experience because it's not anything I even knew existed. You know, when I played cup volleyball, it's like, oh, I just played for the club and we just went to some tournaments and then we had fun, yeah. you know, and, and now seeing the other side of it, it's it's a lot. Yeah. yeah. And how many clubs do you have? We have 130. 130 um, clubs. Some of them are satellites. And so they're larger clubs that have, you know, um, just different branches in different parts of the state. But yeah, across Wisconsin, we have 130 clubs. Mm -hmm. And are you hosting any local tournaments and, you know, junior to adult to just um, <clears throat> volleyball development as a whole? Yeah, we have um, our Badger Region Championships is our, I would say, our marquee event. We have 750 teams um, over three weekends at the Wisconsin Center yeah. in downtown Milwaukee. So it's a lot. Um, so it sounds like a lot. Yeah, yeah, but it's great. I mean, it's 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 like this convention. Yeah. It's a reunion. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the officials love coming back. We have coaches who have been there, you know, since it started. Um, we we've been around since 1994, and they've been running it since the late 90s. And cool. so it's it's just a really long-standing tournament. Now we're like, oh, this is really big. Okay. And so thankfully, our convention center is expanding. Um, we also host a power league and a and a qualifier. One of the really cool things that we do is we have we, it's called, we called it the BBS, the Badger Boys Series. And so it's a high level scrimmage, I guess, for boys 12s and 13s. And that has really spurred our boys growth and, and people love it. And it's I love seeing those boys play. Um, we host a, another boys tournament, the Dale Rohde Memorial. Dale was a longtime official parent um, coach in our region and he passed away from cancer. And when he passed, we had a conversation with his wife and she said, I'd like to give some money to, to sponsor a boys tournament. And so it's a low cost boys tournament. It's one day. Um, we host it with our Badger Region Championships when, when space allows. And we've had teams come from Minnesota and Iowa. Um, and one of the teams from Minnesota who came last year said, this is the only tournament our boys have played against boys. This is amazing. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so just to try to help that boys growth is really cool. Yeah had a similar moment when, and I, I had a very short coaching career. Um, but I, I had a similar moment. I was coaching a 14s boys team in Colorado mm -hmm. and, um, we were at a tryout and it was actually a girls tryout, mm -hmm. but they had some boys there kind of simultaneously mm -hmm. doing it. Um, but it, the first day was only one boy, uh, in the 14 U kind of mm -hmm. age range and, um, loved it still loved it. His sisters were there playing. Uh, and then, the next day there were probably five or six more nice. boys and his face just lit up just because he'd never played against other boys his age before yep. and then had a great team form from that and just had a blast seeing them 
just enjoy volleyball. It yep. was just so cool for to sure. see and very rewarding for yep. sure. For yeah. Sure. What uh, you you talked a little bit about mm -hmm. it, but what were what are some of the like recent successes in the Badger region? I know you talked about the growth of the boys mm -hmm. game, uh, but just some of those recent successes that come to mind. It, and it's funny, we my my staff does a great job. We have a great communications in Badger region, and, and we put together in the last. 16 months badger region across all levels has had 12 national championships oh awesome like when you think of wisconsin you don't think a hotbed of volleyball you know you think of california or just you know just those types yeah. of things but um obviously last year with uw wisconsin or uw madison winning the national championship um uw eau claire women won the national championship for division mm -hmm. three carthage men's won back to back um on the college club we have a very very robust college club scene in wisconsin uw oshkosh um, men and women beat UW lacrosse men and women wow. for the title. That's awesome. And I so, was going to mention Oshkosh yeah. as being a powerhouse. I yes. played a collegiate club okay. at Texas State. Nice. And Oshkosh was always the mm, yes. the go to. You wanted to go watch them play. For sure. <laughs> yeah. For sure. No. And then I mean, we had three um, three teams win boys and girls junior national championships last year. Milwaukee Sting and FC Elite won some titles. Yeah. Um, our high performance teams won two titles this summer. And so just just those successes alone are the visible ones. But then it's, you know, it's the all the, the other smaller successes. And just the, you know, we hear from clubs that come to our region championships. They're like, this was the first time we ever won a match. Like that was amazing. The kids had such an, a great experience. And so it's it's the high level visible ones from from Madison, from Wisconsin winning to that you know level. And it's it's great. That's awesome. I love how each of these conversations have kind of been naturally just inclusive of you know the conversation of boys volleyball mm -hmm. and like i saw the way your face lit up and we yep. just you know we just interviewed steve not too long ago same thing happened with him and you know we just also uh released uh, uh an episode with john sparat who's oh, yeah. our men's national team coach and he's talking about you know the growth and development of the boys mm -hmm. game and how important it is and you know just the state of the boys game right now and how we need to you know continue to support the boys game as <laughs> i love the public setting we yeah. have here but, <laughs> that was lee fine swag from volleyball magazine uh -huh. just laughing yeah, oh, yeah. perfect yeah perfect, perfect. timing <laughs> but um what was i going with this like just um just these natural conversations about growing the the, the boys mm -hmm. game of volleyball and continuing to support there and doing what we need to do to grow the game so you know what are some other things that the badger region is doing to help yeah. grow you know the game of boys volleyball and it, it's funny i mean just being at Penn State with Pav um, when I was there. And, and when I was there, Matt Anderson was a gangly 6'5 kid who weighed about 95 pounds. Yep. Um, obviously, we all know his success now. <laughs> doing pretty good. And so he's, he's, he's doing like, he's, okay. He's doing okay. He's done all right. Um, and Max Holt. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, if you don't know the story of Max Holt when he was a freshman serving against Braun Irvine, do some research. That was the match where the, the lights went out at Penn State. Do you guys know about no, that No, I don't one? know that story, actually. Oh, yeah. You'll have to do some research. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we'll have Max on to talk about have that. Have Max oh, yeah. and Spra yeah. on yeah. About, about the lights going out when he was serving in the national semifinal. Wow. Uh-huh. Because the lights were on a timer at, at Rec Hall. Nobody thought to turn the timer <laughs> off. Uh -oh. Timer's now been fixed. Uh -oh. <laughs> it's not I like hope that so. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness. Yeah, that was probably 2006, five, wow. six. Yeah. So that's that's another story. A little teaser for <clears throat> for a later episode, exactly. maybe. Yeah. Be on the lookout for turn off the light uh, lights episode. Right? <laughs> that's exactly. awesome. <laughs> um, and so just getting immersed in that when I was at Penn State, it it really I really become an advocate for boys volleyball. Um, Brian Sharkey, who's my um, my one of my staff members, is just a complete amazing person. He's so um, nice. So oh nice. He's, he's so, so nice. knowledgeable. Just he's a really he's the champion of Badger, of boys volleyball in Badger Region. And so he takes it and he's, and he's a high school coach too. Okay. And so he is in with all the high school coaches, with all the club coaches. We have a great relationship with all of our boys clubs. Um, and so just being like, Hey, d does this try out? You know, cause a lot of the focus is on the girl side because that's the, the larger number and you know, that's how it is. But we really try to be like, okay, but is this good for the boys too? Does this tryout model that we have for the girls? Does that also work for the boys at all levels? Um, you know, is there anything we can do to help with anything? Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I'm most proud of is we have a boys high school grant. And so any high school in the state of Wisconsin who is starting boys at any level will give a thousand dollars to. Awesome. We had six start last year. Wow. Yeah. So um, Sharky and I just went to the Wisconsin Athletic Directors Association conference and had a booth there and talked to athletic directors from around the state being like, hey, 
do you know this is available? Like, we'll, we'll help you, we'll do whatever. Um, the unique thing about Wisconsin too is our boys high school is in the fall. And so we're one of just a few areas, I think a couple areas in New York, some in Virginia. Yeah, normally spring. Normally yeah. spring. Yeah. And so our boys club, when everybody else goes into their high school season, our clubs don't have that much to do. And so we try to provide them with opportunities during that downtime from you know late February to March until May. Um, and so we just, yeah, that's when we do the, the region championships and the Dale and things like that. And so just try to provide outreach. And, and like I mentioned before, the Badger Boys series, um, just kind of bringing recognition. Um, we've partnered with the High School Coaches Association to do um, watch lists and all tournament teams and rankings and polls and just trying to help bring that visibility to the boys game, especially being so close to Minnesota mm -hmm. and them just approving boys. You know, we're trying to show, OK, this is actually a legit thing. What can we do to help? Um, and so, yeah. You talked a little bit about it there, um, just about the grant and, mm -hmm. and wanting to start more on the boys high school level. But what are I guess for the girls and boys side, uh, what is the Badger region doing to continue the growth of volleyball in the region um, yeah. from the grassroots level level up? We really try to be, we just went through a nine month strategic plan and we really try to be cognizant of what is our, what do our customers want? Um, what do our clubs need? What can we do to help them? Um, we have experienced significant growth in the last couple of years. Like I said, 750 teams in our region championships. Yeah. I mean, five years ago, we would have been like, okay, let's try to hit 600. Yeah. And so just seeing that growth has been great. And so we've done a lot to kind of ask, hey, what, what does this, does this trial policy work for you guys? Or we took away some, reduced some fees, which in this day and age is not really a thing. Um, we took away team fees. We took away just kind of making that administration easier because we understand that being a club director, that's a lot. And so if we can, if we can get the, the big clubs, make it easier for them, but also the new clubs coming in, um, that's kind of one of our goals. And just customer service and communication is really something that we strive for. And I think we're pretty good at it. Yeah. Um, we put out, a, Sharky does a great job with the newsletter. Um, we have a newsletter that comes out every other week. We just started an official's newsletter that comes out every other week to really try to educate and, and bring visibility to the officials. Um, so coaching education we do a lot with we have a program called 3c coaches coaching coaches and so rather than you know just having a coaching clinic and you go and sit at it and then leave um, we'll send mentors out to a practice and they can talk about practice philosophy and we're not going to teach you how to pass <laughs> yeah. but we'll ask you why are you doing that drill oh cool have you thought about doing the drill this way and kind of like the cap um the cap model of let's just think about it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing things um, that we call lunch and learn. And so just taking an hour over a lunch period, we did one on um, bo boys growth, just doing a Facebook live. We have one coming up in a few weeks with um, Eric Hodgson from Arizona region and Marwan Jafir from Delaware, who are, I know are cap cadre and, and are in the, the coaching education realm, um, just about like preseason volleyball and what, you know, when you have parents, how do you run a parent meeting and, you know, just stuff like that that I think, you know, we're just trying to do as much as we can and provide as many services as we can. It's a good thing there's an expert in communications uh, <laughs> in, in the region. <laughs> yes, well, and, and Sharky also has a journalism degree. Oh, there you go. So two awesome. of the five people on our staff are, uh, we drown people Talkers. with facts a lot. I'm yeah. <laughs> I'm not a talker, I'm a writer. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, so it, it's, it's good. And it's, you know, a lot of the, the problems that arise are from because people don't understand. Yeah, yeah. And so we really try to go above and beyond. We call it drowning with facts, which sometimes is probably annoying. <laughs> but the more people understand the why, even if they don't like the answer, the more the people understand the why, they're like, oh, OK, that yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, I can. Under, I, 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 yeah. OK, fine. Set them up for success. And, exactly. and the answers are there when they have those questions. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Awesome. Yeah. You know, you're you're a leader in, you know, your region and, you know, your your community of volleyball. And, you know, we're talking about a lot of these growing points and, you know, points of development and, you know, from the, you know, boy side, girl side, mm -hmm. even on the official side, you touched on a little bit too. What what have been some other um, successes that you just see, uh, you know, whether it's in the community, on your staff, um, uh, on a tournament standpoint, just some just some some wins, some successes that you just noticed and, you know, have really seen come through. Yeah. I mean, there, there's so many different little stories that are really cool. 
Um, we're doing a lot with, obviously there's an official shortage um, and, and, and a lot of different events popping up that are pulling officials away from the regions. Um, and so we're doing a lot with just kind of training officials and, and seeing the kids, and, and we're focusing on a younger demographic, um, seeing the college kids get up and officiate their first match and just seeing like, oh, this is kind of cool. Um, and seeing, we're also doing a lot with sportsmanship. We just partnered with, <clears throat> excuse me, a company focused on sportsmanship and really promoting that and seeing that take hold um, has been really rewarding because it's, it's, this is a human game, you know, and, and volleyball is a game of mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes from the coaches to the officials, to the, to the players. And we actually have, have banners and signage at our events. That's like, Hey, this is a learning environment. The coaches are learning. The officials are learning. The players are learning. Don't, don't, don't yell at everybody, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the good things to come out of COVID and something that we learned a lot about was when we had parents doing line judges and tables and, oh, and stuff yeah. like that, yeah. I, I think it really put in perspective, like, oh, this is hard. This is challenging. This, is, <laughs> <It's not laughs> this, easy. Isn't, this isn't fun. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually, we would joke around with it and say, players, please don't yell at the line judges. We need you. We need them to take you home. <laughs> yeah, <I laughs> because love that. it was their parents. <laughs> kind of a reverse role there, <laughs> exactly, almost. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I can and see so, it just like that, that <clears throat> child yelling at the parents. Score! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> score! Exactly. Scoreboard! Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And it was funny too because there were some parents who didn't know how to do the scorebook. Yeah. And so we, you know, we tried to provide the training and the online training. And, and the USA Volleyball Coach Academy does amazing job with the modules and the education for mm -hmm. officials. Yeah. Um, and so we did a lot with that. But there were parents who would run to the table to get the book and the, and the, you know, score flip or to get the score flip rather than the book, because they knew that they were like, Oh, I don't want to do this. They don't want that job. Yeah. <laughs> this is the easy job. I already know. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so yeah. I love that approach. Cause uh, like you said, you're getting more young kids into officiating. Mm -hmm. uh, but I had never thought about having parents get on the scores table and do that job or on mm -hmm. the court and do line judging. Yeah. Uh, it's that's humbling. a great approach. And, and for them to, you know, realize next time they're sitting in the stands, have a better, uh, I, I guess, uh, understanding of yeah. those officials who are out there. Yeah. Well, and we found that it, it kind of helps with tournament management too. Obviously yeah, yeah. if you don't have to have a work team and you can have parents working that match, it that takes, you know, a match out of the day. And so we found with some of our scheduling challenges, I mean, we don't do it at the older ages. Like you're not going to put parents on an 18s boys match. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not going to end well for anyone. Yeah. Um, but, you know, at the younger ages, the parents love it. They can get out of there faster. It's just a more efficient tournament. Yeah. So we're, that's one of the things that we're kind of taking out of COVID yeah. is, hey, let's let's look at when we can do this. Let's look at keeping yeah. keep going. And establishing that learning environment for everybody. Exactly. Like you mentioned, I think that's yep. super cool. Yeah. We had I, we talked about it with Steve, too, but I just love Patty Rolf's quote, uh, bring love and kindness Yes. Into officiating, and yes. I think that's exactly we what call we're it doing. rainbows and unicorns. Well, I love rainbows that too. Rainbows and unicorns. <laughs> and Patty's from Badger Region. Yeah, she was yeah, on she our is. board, yeah, and so is. she would bring that to our board and be like, "Why are we doing this? Yeah, this, this doesn't make sense. Yeah. Why are we doing this?" I'm like, yeah, yeah, you're right. That's super cool. <laughs> so that's it was awesome. cool to see her up on the stand last night too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, she that was awesome. Job. That was awesome. Yeah. Should we talk about that? How did you enjoy the the games last yeah. night? Yeah, they were good. They were they really were they were great. I mean, my my husband started at University of Pittsburgh with Dan when he started at Pitt. And so that one was tough um, because we know they didn't play the way they could have played. Yeah. Um, the match at Wisconsin was amazing. Yeah. Like that was one of the best volleyball matches I've seen in a while. Yeah. Um, and so I know they're disappointed, but to get here again, yep. it, it, that says something. They're doing so. something right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And to force that fifth set too. For sure. Yeah. For that sure. was cool. For sure. Yeah. Um, you talked a little bit about, um, we've talked about boys. We've talked about the girls growth. Mm -hmm. Um, officials, who, who are some of the people or maybe some of the clubs in your region who are kind of doing things right and, and helping the sport of volleyball grow within your region? Maybe, you know, a region or player coach club director is helping mm -hmm. another club or something like that that, yeah. that you've seen that just makes you smile. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have to start with my staff. Yeah. I mean, I have Brian Charkey, who's my program director. He does all the communications and the boys. Um, Scott Spies, who was a longtime coach with Milwaukee Sting, um, just a really great guy. He's the he's the like even keel one <laughs> out of all of us, which is great. You need you need that type of person. Um, and so he does a lot with coaching education. Kelly Lehman is my tournament director um, and just 
he he's got a mind like he can look at AES scheduling and just like piece it in. I'm like, I, I don't even I don't know what you're doing, but it's it's like the Matrix. Yeah, but I, he it can, takes me like 10 minutes to just I'm like, what? <sighs> what did you just I, I need a second to just break that right. down. So that's insane. Right. Yeah, so we'll be at a tournament and somebody he's like, Oh, I'm gonna move this over here. I'm like, ah, what are you doing? I'm glad you're doing that. Like yeah. why? I need to know the why behind. Right. Like <laughs> <laughs> right. right. <clears throat> and then Sarah Voigt, who's my um, officials person and, and youth director. And so just the work that they do behind the scenes and, and that, I mean, it's it's great to see. And they're they're the they're the faces of the region and they go out and then they talk to people and they do, you know, the coaching and club directors. Um <clears throat> one person who doesn't get enough credit is Jason Smith from the Wisconsin Volleyball Conference. So that's the college club. He has been doing that for years and just to, to build up the college conferences. Um, you know, sometimes the college clubs are like herding cats because it's, you know, it's, it's not the visible, de- de- like, you know, intercollegiate athletics right. experience. Yep. Yep. But just the experience that these kids are having, and I, I think that has experienced, is part of the growth of volleyball too, is these high school players who don't, Maybe they don't want the Division One, Two, Three NAI experience, yeah. but they still want to play. Um, for Jason and his team, who are all volunteers, to go and, and have this such success at the at the WVC level is is awesome. Um, Tom Galecki of Wapaka Boat Ride, who you know one of the largest grass tournaments in the country. I still, I'm trying to get to that tournament oh, to play. So in cool. it. yeah, it looks it's so, so fun. cool. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I need to do a little bit more training. Mm-hmm. I have lost uh, d- due to COVID. <laughs> okay, I, I'm, I'm not kidding. in the best shape I, I used to be in, but I, uh, I would love to play that. in that. <laughs> I would love to play in that tournament. It looks yeah. like such a fun time. It is. Yeah. It is. It's fun. <clears throat> but just you know, there, we have a lot of just facilities who are like, "Hey, can I run? Can I run a youth tournament?" Or if I mention one club director, I'm going to get in trouble. But I'll just say that I love all of my club directors. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have really good relationships with with a lot of our clubs and. A lot of people saying, okay, well, I can't do that. Why? And so we explain the why and they're like, okay, but can we do this? We're like, yeah, let's, Mm -hmm. let's figure it out. I do annoy my staff a lot because I am the, I was a setter in college. So I like to facilitate success. Mm -hmm. And so my first thought isn't no. My first thought is, yeah, how can we do that? My staff's like, hey, can we talk about this? Can we breathe? Can we? <laughs> let's, let's think about Take this. Take a second here, right, yeah. Right. Like, <laughs> maybe, we're good. Let's go. Maybe let's the answer it. does need to be no or not right now. I'm like, mm. okay, fine. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, no, there's just so many cool people in, in Badger region. And, and, and that's what I love. I know there's some areas of the country where it gets cutthroat and whatever. And we don't really have that in Wisconsin. I mean, we do. We do in some level, you know, tryouts. Everybody hates tryouts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and that type of stuff. But for the most part, everybody really works well together. Um, hey, what are you doing for this? And and just kind of collaborating and, and that type of stuff. So it's it's been great. Yeah. If uh, if a parent or adult has an athlete who wants to start playing in your region. Yeah. Uh, what are some of those first steps that they can take? Um, you know, um, on you know, who can they talk to? Where can mm-hmm. they go to find out more information? How can they take that first step to get involved yeah. and start it? I, I know this will surprise you, but we have a very robust website for communication. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wonder why. I, I don't know why. <laughs> I wonder who's behind that. Um, and we're actually redoing it right now. But um, no, uh, the Badger Region website is, is the first one, badgervolleyball.org. Um, we have a listing of all the junior clubs in the state broken out by area of the state, boys and girls. Um, one of the cool things that we do too is after tryouts, we have a listing of clubs looking for players and players looking for clubs. And so if players go through the tryout process and find they don't have an offer for a club or, or the offer that they received isn't what they wanted or whatever, they can email, put a, a email submission or a form submission on our website. We put it on the website and then clubs can look and be like, oh, I need a, a 14s middle. This girl's available or Oh, you know, that type of stuff. And one of the cool successes this year is one of our clubs was able to form a team of 12 from the players looking list. Wow. Wow. Cool. And so it's like just providing opportunities yeah. like that, like that just gives me chills. <laughs> um, and, and it's that type of those little things that people don't really know about until, you know, until it works and it's cool. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Jen, this has been incredible, an awesome conversation. Thank yeah. you so much for taking the time to sit down with us. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about, about your region, about volleyball as a whole, uh, before we let you go here? Yeah, I mean, just volleyball as a whole is really cool. And, and yeah. it's just, just such a small community. And there's people doing great things all over the country. You know, with the recent hurricane, Florida region is putting together, um, or is underway, uh, a sponsorship, or a, not a sponsorship, like a donation for their families. 
and several regions have contributed and, and they've been able to put out tens of thousands of dollars to help families who wow, have been devastated awesome. by the hurricane yeah. and clubs. You know, these people wouldn't stay in volleyball. And it's it's like that, like that's just a snapshot of the volleyball community. And yeah. that's been the cool part is, you know, it, there, there's drama in club volleyball. We all know that. Um, but at the base of it, it's good people. Mm-hmm. We all know everybody, even yep. across enemy lines. Yep. Um, across and the net. <laughs> across the net. Um, you know, we're competitors on the court, but we're friends off of it. Yeah. And that's the coolest part to me. And, and being in an environment like this and, mm-hmm. and you know, just with the people at Penn State that I've, I've, you know, had relationships with and with my husband knowing everybody, it's like volleyball is like six degrees of separation. Yeah. It, it, it's just a really cool thing. And you can learn something from everybody. And, and the most, you know, important conversations are the ones that are had in the, the hotel lobby or the restaurant yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Because you can be like, oh, what do, what do you do for this? And what do you do for this? And it's just really kind of small and intimate. And you're like, oh, yeah, no, that'll work for me. So that's just kind of the coolest thing about volleyball for me. Um, and I like my role because I get yeah. to do a lot of cool things. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of, like you said, drama, politics, mm-hmm. competitiveness in yep. volleyball. Um, but at the end of the day, we're all family, volleyball yep. family. We, we take care of each other. For sure. Um, and I love that. And, and like you said, just an environment like this where you – can walk five steps and you run into someone you know just oh, shows yeah. how small the community really is yeah, yeah. i mean yeah. i stood in the in the arena last night and we we literally for a half an hour didn't make it more than five feet <laughs> yeah. because we ran into brian Hemelgarn, who's um, a you know mm-hmm. wonderful official yeah. mm-hmm. and then we got to talking and then someone else stopped by and then someone else uh, we were just standing in the arena <laughs> yeah kind of reminds you why you do this too exactly. yeah this exactly. is awesome yeah, yeah. Well, Jen, thank you so much. Yep. This has been incredible. And uh, look forward to hopefully having you on again sometime. Anytime. Yeah. We can talk all about uh, your experiences at Penn State <laughs> with Rose. <laughs> we'll have to see what's available for yeah. family content. Right. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Jen. Of course. Yeah. Thank you. Kind of the complete opposite uh, from last week's episode with Cody March and as far as uh, if we're talking specifically about backgrounds in volleyball, Cody coming from a non-volleyball background. This week we had Jen Armson Dyer on from the Badger region. She's very much coming from a volleyball background, <laughs> uh, just growing up around the game with her mom being a longtime high school coach in Wisconsin. Uh, Jen's a Wisconsin native, obviously. Um, Wisconsin being a pretty powerhouse state in volleyball, I would say um from all the way from the junior to the collegiate level oh yeah um but jen also played at northwestern in college she was an sid we talked a lot about that with her uh she was an sid for 10 years uh, at penn state uh some really great years uh there at penn state with both the men's and women's volleyball programs so definitely using that background to her advantage uh not only the volleyball background but her communications and, and media background too to help grow the, the sport of volleyball in her region and look for creative ways to continue that growth and that membership um, growth from from coaches to to players to officials. Um, yeah, just uh, honestly, just a great conversation we had with Jen. Uh, really enjoyed that conversation. You know, I actually had the pleasure to meet her, you know, way before ABCA, uh, oh, awesome. um, you know, in Omaha at the uh, 2022 All-Star Championship. And, uh, you know, she just uh, a, a literal wealth of knowledge around the game of volleyball and, you know, you know, the Wisconsin, the Badger region, excuse me, is, you know, in very, 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 very just great hands with someone like her who's, you know, dedicated to, um, you know, growing the region as much as possible, doing anything, uh, you know, she, you know, needs to do to, you know, just, show success and growth in you know in the volleyball community whether it's on the junior side even on the adult side of things too there were a couple conversations we're having about you know our open national championship there and um yeah just very 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 respectable person and and leader in her in her um in her wheelhouse there sorry pk came in the frame and just (laughs) again that's the if you're watching if you're watching the episode you get a little bit extra there. You get a little PK action. So that's, <laughs> but yeah, very, Jen is just very knowledgeable uh, of volleyball and her region. And and that's to a benefit of that. You mentioned volleyball community as well. I think that's uh, kind of been a consistent theme here with our, our first two episodes uh, in the regional commissioner month here. Um, just more, they're doing more than just 
uh, focusing on their club scenes, on their on their clubs, their club directors, players, parents. They're doing more to to have outreach into the community, and that only helps grow the the volleyball scene, the volleyball community in their regions, and uh, continue to grow through that grassroots program, introducing volleyball at a younger age, um, and uh, just strengthening the the pipeline for for those programs. So. Uh, love that, love that consistent theme of just volleyball community because we, we we mentioned it so many times. It's it's a large community, but it's a it's a small community. Everybody has a connection somehow. Everybody knows everybody, and um, you never know if you're, you know, the the player that you're you're facing across the net is going to be your college roommate one day or something. Uh, so, uh, yeah, just just love the conversation we've been and and. Um, Love that we're just continuing to have these conversations with our commissioners and learning so much from them. Hundred percent, and you know, kind of like you, you, you mentioned and kind of in implied, there's just so much that they're doing. Um, that you know that they like they do talk about like in all of our interviews that we've had, and there's so much that is being done that you know is just not talked about. It's just part of the day to day. There's just so much heavy lifting, you know, that's applied to that, and you know, um, our regions are in a you know unique position to you know thrive and grow and you know make so many strides for the betterment of volleyball overall and you know you know jen is just one of those people who you know is all in and you know along with a lot of our other all, all of our other regional commission excuse me there and it's just really good really good time to be a part of all this too and really be really great time to be having these conversations you know how we are especially leading, leading up to our you know annual meetings in may coming up in dallas hint hint for uh opens you know we'll just see if we can continue a lot of those conversations there but yeah amazing um <clears throat> yeah just a big thank you again jen uh, you know, of the Badger region uh, for sitting down with us, especially at ABCA, you know, with how busy, uh, you know, you were, you know, with we were and, you know, just everybody we sat down with just had 40, 40, 40,000 things going on right now. But be sure to stay tuned this month as we will be chatting with a few of our other USA Volleyball Regional Commissioners. Uh, I think this is a good time to segue into some upcoming events with Steve Vine. <laughs> Steve Vine. <laughs> <laughs> That's never going to get old. Oh, no. Uh <laughs> Uh, yeah, coming up uh, with our upcoming events, we have the AVCA Dallas Girls 18s National Qualifier February 17th through the 19th in Dallas, Texas. The Boys Atlantic Northeastern National Qualifier Week 2, February 18th through the 20th in Mannheim, Pennsylvania. Good luck to everyone competing in those events. Shout out again uh, to, you just mentioned it, but shout out to all of our USAB regions for setting up and hosting those events. You know, it's not uncommon for a regional commissioner to be running the scoreboard or something at an event. They they literally do everything and these events could not get off the ground without our region. So thank you and we appreciate you so much. More details on all upcoming events can be found at usavolleyball.org. Man, you can definitely tell when we're in our, <clears throat> I mean, year round is busy, don't get me wrong, but you can definitely tell when, our, when we're in our, you know, really, really, really busy seasons with events too. It's just such a short list. I don't, I can't remember the last time you've read a list this short of <laughs> Well, <events> so <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a short list, but if you think about it, we, we are dropping three straight episodes. So we try to like stay really, um, I guess, current on the events that are coming up. And since we'll have another episode next week, we'll you're right, you're right. My have bad, the bad, next week bad. of events coming up. So, which I think is a little oh, bit man. of a longer list. So it is. I'm just imagining being in sunshine in Orlando, being That's in right. sunshine, coming being, up, being in Orlando coming for up. sunshine classic. That would be uh, good old Orlando. Can't wait for it for sure. But um, just a few uh, indoor club reminders, just, you know, since we're on the topic of sunshine, uh, we will be in Orlando for sunshine classic. Um, uh at the end of february and also the first weekend of march we also have registration still open for those looking to compete um in a national qualifier um that will be for the salt lake city showdown on april 8th through 10th and the 14th through the 16th as of right now there is no wait list as of today but Weekend two, um, registration is filling up very quickly as teams are starting to complete requirements and get accepted. So weekend two has a little bit let a little bit more of an opportunity to generate a wait list. April 8th through 10th, which is also on Easter weekend, is a lot more open. So if you're looking to get a team in and compete 
um, in the 11th, 12th, 16th, and 17th divisions. April 8th through 10th is your weekend to compete. Also, registration is open for our Open National Championship in Dallas, Texas. It's like a fun time for the adults. We got a lot, a lot of fun things in the works here. And this is the year, year of growth. Every year is a year of growth. And I'm going to say it again. I'm so excited to be in Dallas this year. Um, it's a great I, city. Great city for opens. Oh, really? Un, unbiased opinion, obviously. Uh, mm, I don't know about that. We got, <laughs> uh, we got to vet that. We got, we got to check your sources there. I'm just kidding. But um, <laughs> registration's open today. We have 30 divisions um, over the course of May 26th through the 31st. It's going to be a great time. The details are really going to love this one for sure. The, yeah, the, the, actually, the only time I've ever competed at Opens was in Dallas. Uh, really? In fact, so um, not only am I from Dallas, but I also competed at the event in Dallas. So I can say it's a great time. Great you time should for Opens. Uh, you should look at trying to repeat, you know, back to back. Times competing. I don't know. Might see. have to do some uh, some high intensity training, some stretching, <laughs> uh, <laughs> some stretching. <laughs> some I, gotta hot start, yoga. I gotta start my pregame stretching right now. <laughs> gotta do some. Just gotta remember how to be an athlete. You know. That's right. That's right. Ooh man, my my knees are hurting as I'm thinking about <laughs> trying to get a team together too. But it'll be a fun time. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Thank you for for those club event reminders. Uh, moving on here. Remember, listeners, you can rate and review, share with friends, family, teammates. It really helps this podcast grow and reach new listeners. Check out our video podcasts now, our video episodes that are on our website and YouTube channel. Thank you for all your support. Do you know a club that should be featured? Maybe a story from an athlete or coach, club director, parent that you'd like us to share? You can email us at the USAB show at usab.org. <laughs> Let me say that again. You can email us at the USAB show at USAB.org. It's not like I read this every week. I was going to tell you, pause for the dramatic effect this time. That's right. That's you right. Dramatic yourself, effect. Hey, I tried. I tried. Leave us feedback and let us know about any future topics that you like to hear about. Reminder, we have three episodes dropping this month. It is Regional Commissioner Month. This is number two. Be on the lookout for our next episode coming out next week. Until next time, this is the USA Volleyball Show, the official podcast of USA Volleyball. This has been the USA Volleyball Show with Clarence Hughes and Stephen Munson, produced by Curtis Ward. Our content producer is Lara Fawcett. Our marketing lead is Bree J. Cox. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to rate and review. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the USA Volleyball Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts.